Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm gonna be restoring this filthy MacBook which I received in a previous Tech Lot video. This laptop has a discolored base and lots of grime on the keyboard and display. It's also covered in scratches and stickers which I hope to be able to remove. Despite the filth, this MacBook does run. However, someone has removed the battery which I believe had expanded given the bent bottom base. It appears that this laptop was used by a young child given the stickers and games that are installed. Although personally, I would have never let a child or anyone for that matter use a laptop in such a dirty state. I don't even know how anyone could let their laptop get so filthy. This MacBook will be needing a thorough cleaning, new thermal paste and a new battery along with an SSD upgrade. For the cleaning, I will be using Brasso metal polish, cleaning alcohol, canned air, some Q-tips, a toothbrush, and even some toothpaste. More on that later. To begin, I will remove the eight screws holding in place the bottom cover of this laptop. Removing it, you can see evidence of some form of liquid which has entered on the DVD side of the laptop. The insides of this laptop are much cleaner than I was expecting with it still having its original hard drive. Although liquid has entered, the logic board has no evidence of corrosion. We can proceed by removing the 250 GB 5400 RPM hard drive. With that out of the way, we can start removing the logic board by first disconnecting all of the cables attached to it. As they're attached in different ways, always be careful when removing them, as doing so incorrectly can result in breaking the connector from the board. The trickiest of them all is the LCD connector, which is very fragile and needs to be unplugged carefully. Next up comes all of the screws. There is various sizes of Torx and Phillips screws which will need to be removed to get this logic board out of the laptop. The first thing that will need to come out is this grill at the back. Surprisingly, it is much cleaner than many of the other laptops I've worked on. I'll also need to remove the many Torx screws holding the actual logic board in place as well as the three Phillips screws holding the fan assembly to the frame. With the fan removed, there is two final screws for the MagSafe board, which will need to be unscrewed before I can lift the motherboard out of the laptop. With that removed, it's time to turn our attention to the airport card, which I'll start by removing the three cables connecting to it, as well as three Phillips head screws. I'll also take out the DVD drive, just so I can clean underneath. With everything removed from the frame, I'm going to use some canned air and a microfiber cloth to remove any dust or dirt inside the laptop. I'll also give the ports a good clean using an old toothbrush. There was quite a large amount of dirt built up between where the base meets the plastic of the frame of the MacBook, so using some Q-tips, I was able to clean that up like new. I'm now going to turn my attention back to the logic board of this MacBook and taking a closer look at it, you can see quite a lot of dust. This is not the worst I've seen, however, it's definitely needing a good clean. I started with some compressed air to blow off the big chunks of dust. However, that didn't prove too effective, so I came in with a toothbrush and cleaned this up as best I could. Now, I don't live in a dust-free environment and didn't want to scrub away too hard at the board, possibly causing damage to various components, so there might be a few specks of dust still left on here when I'm done. I did notice a small strip of some kind of liquid which had appeared. Although there was no corrosion, I cleaned it off with some alcohol along with the MagSafe port, which, while not perfect, is definitely looking a lot cleaner than it did. The ports also saw a good dusting with the toothbrush and it's now time to apply some new thermal paste. I will gradually remove the four Phillips head screws and pull off the heatsink which was quite stuck down with the very crusty dry thermal paste. I can come in with yet another Q-tip and clean the old thermal paste from the copper pads. I'll do the same process for the CPU and GPU chips, making sure they are looking nice and spotless before we get that new thermal paste installed. Now when it comes to thermal paste, there is no correct amount, just use some common sense on what you believe is going to spread evenly across the die. I can then fasten the four Phillips head screws, gradually applying pressure to the chips. 
Next up is the Wi-Fi antenna, which needed a good cleaning as it had some form of liquid residue. I'll also need to properly clean the CPU fan, and to do that I can remove one screw and two clips, which will open up the insides of the CPU fan. This will give me much better access with a brush to be able to clean out the fins of the fan. Giving it a light brush and using some canned air, we can get this thing looking like new. Clipping it back together and installing the one screw, it's ready to go. Turning our attention to the rest of the MacBook, it's time to get the stickers off of the top lid and give the plastic itself a good clean and polish. Now these stickers were painfully hard to remove and left a lot of residue which we'll need to remove with some cleaning alcohol. Applying it directly to the plastic, I can come in with a paper towel and do my best at cleaning up the top lid and removing any of the residue. This required quite a lot of cleaning alcohol and a lot of scrubbing, but after a good 5 or 10 minutes, this MacBook is already looking much better. But I wanted to remove as many of the scratches and marks that still remained. So coming in with some Brasso metal polish, I'm actually going to be applying it to the plastic and trying to polish it out. And as you can see, it didn't do too bad of a job and it did remove a few of the light scratches. Now keep in mind, it won't fix the deep scratches and under bright conditions, you can still see the laptop is quite scratched, but it's definitely looking much better than it did before. I also did the same method to the palm rest of the laptop, which was also quite marked and scratched up. With our housing now looking much better, we can come back and clean up the DVD drive, install it back into the frame and install its three screws. I can then install the Wi-Fi antenna back to the device and get its cables connected back into place. Proceeding, I can reinstall the logic board, starting by lining up the ports first and then lowering it into place, making sure not to trap any cables underneath. We can reinstall the eight screws holding in place the logic board and MagSafe port. There was quite a lot of screws to keep track throughout this restoration, so I'd recommend a magnetic mat if you're doing something similar so you can organize and stop screws from rolling around in your workspace. With the fan reinstalled, I can reconnect all of the cables and connections connecting to the logic board itself. During this stage, I realized I made a minor error and installed a screw into the wrong place. Luckily, all the screws here are the same size, so no damage was caused. I'll need to clean this vent piece that attaches to the back of the MacBook, so coming in with a toothbrush and another Q-tip, I can clean out all of the grooves. Pressing it down back into the MacBook, we can fasten the many screws holding it into place. For now, I'm going to reinstall this 250 gig hard drive just so we can test out the laptop to make sure that we didn't damage it in our cleaning process. And with the charger connected, you can see it's up and running once again. With it all running, it's time for some upgrades. I will install a new 240 gigabyte SSD so we can give this old laptop a bit of a speed boost. I'll also need a replacement battery as it's missing one. I was going to buy a used one for this laptop, however, no seller could confirm that their battery would even work. While I usually use iFixit branded batteries, they didn't have this one in stock. So I purchased this two power branded one for $99. I would never recommend a generic battery as they have a tendency to shut off at random. I have used this brand before many years ago in my 2009 MacBook and had no issues with it. This battery has a good weight to it and doesn't feel spongy and cheap like many other batteries I've seen. Performing an SSD upgrade to one of these old Macs is so easy. One bracket and four screws is all it takes and you can quickly swap over the drive. No paired or unreplaceable SSD is found here like we see in the new Macs. I can then install the new replacement battery and the three Phillips screws at the bottom. Usually there's also three triwing screws at the top, however I replace those with new Phillips ones. I can then install the SSD and its appropriate bracket and two screws. 
Connecting up the battery, this MacBook is almost done. It is looking nice and clean on the inside and it's got its new SSD and battery ready to go. I didn't opt to upgrade the RAM as RAM is still quite expensive and I believe that 4GB is enough for this old laptop. The last thing that's left to do before we can finish reassembling the laptop is to clean the bottom cover. This is no doubtably the most dirtiest part of the whole laptop. Taping off one half will be able to see the difference my cleaning does. This is where the toothpaste is involved. I've found not only does toothpaste clean your teeth, but it can also clean the rubber bottom of these MacBooks. Applying a good amount, I can use some paper towel and an old toothbrush to scrub away the grime. This whole process to do one half of this bottom cover took me around 10 minutes of constant scrubbing with the toothbrush. Slowly but surely, the grime and dirt was washed away. You can see for yourself the significant difference in the two halves. I am shocked on just how well the toothpaste worked. While there's still some marks left, I won't need to replace the bottom cover. I can then repeat the same process on the other half and it should look just as clean. Not only has the toothpaste cleaned the base, but it's left the laptop with a minty fresh smell. The next problem I'll need to address is the slight bulge where the battery had expanded Using my fingers, I can simply bend that back into place. I can now remove the plastic film from the replacement battery and install the bottom cover. Reinstalling the eight screws, this MacBook is once together reassembled. The last thing I'll need to do is clean the keyboard and display for this MacBook. You can see the keys are quite dirty, so coming in with a Q-tip as well as some more paper towel with plenty of alcohol soaked into it we can clean those white keys and make them much cleaner. There was also a strange amount of grime behind the display, which I cleaned out with a Q-tip, as well as the display itself, which I just used some alcohol and a microfiber cloth. I reinstalled a fresh copy of macOS High Sierra onto our newly installed SSD, and our MacBook is up and running. So this is it, a minty fresh MacBook unibody from 2010. I spent a total of 150 Australian dollars on the replacement battery and SSD for this laptop. The device is in much better condition than at the beginning of the video, however it does still have some scratches and scrapes in the plastic. As you can see the battery has full health and only one charge cycle. If you were looking to do this yourself and want to save some money in doing this you could pick up a used battery or even a cheaper or used SSD drive to go in here. But I decided to go all out and throw in a new battery and SSD into this old MacBook. While this laptop may not be the latest powerhouse, it is perfectly capable of web browsing, watching videos and doing other basic computing tasks. So it'd be a perfect computer for the elderly or maybe even a teenager. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the repair playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for some helpful tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.